Every week I sit here talking to you about the latest Apple gear, be it a Mac, iPad or iPhone, but I'm going to show you this week that they're way more than just pretty images that I put on YouTube every week. They are my way of life. This week we're going to go behind the scenes. It's a BTS of how I use all of my Apple gear and everything I do in this studio here every week to make these videos. You've been asking for it and here it is. I'm David and this is DE Talking Tech. I'm not one of these creators that's got a content pipeline planned out for weeks and weeks in advance. Basically, I go week to week. I like to keep it current. That way I know what you want me to make videos about, what the current trends are, and also what's interesting me that week, and that can change. And I, I like it that way. So I start to think about ideas on a Saturday, generally. It'll be just when I'm out walking, shopping, whatever, I'll just be thinking ideas. And normally by the end of Saturday, I've got one or two ideas of what I might make a video about the following week. On Sunday, I then start to research and make some notes, which brings me kind of to the start of the main working week to Monday morning, which is when it all really starts me. And I start by writing. I've been writing for years and I find it good for a number of reasons. Basically, I write in a program called Ulysses. I generally write on the iPad Pro. Ulysses is great because it publishes directly to my WordPress website, which is talkingtechinaudio.com, if you want to take a look at it. Once I've published a story there and got proof of ownership and so on, I then publish my stories in Medium. I go through a publication called Mac O'Clock, and then I've got a story written. What I will then do, that's in Monday morning, Monday afternoon, I normally come into the studio and I will then begin to make an outline from that story that's ready for video, repurposing content. It's as old as the hills, everybody does it. It's a smart way of working. The benefit for me is I know that I'm telling a story. I'm going from beginning to end. And also I'm not missing out any points that I need to talk about. Because I've only just written that story in the morning, it's really fresh in my mind. I don't script at all. I have tried scripting and you can probably see there is a teleprompter screen right in front of me right now, but I'm not using it. I will explain to you how that comes into play and why it's there later on in the video. I have bullet points on the iPad Pro just to one side out of camera. And I flick down at that as I'm recording just to make sure that I'm staying on point with what I want to be saying. So then I'm kind of almost ready to start recording it. The tripods that you can see here never move. And the three lights, we've got a key light, a fill light and a hair light. They are all constant, same brightness every week. And I always record behind blackout curtains as well. There's a couple of reasons for that. A, I've got a road just the other side of that window with a hospital just behind me. Uh, so I often get ambulances going by. These blackout curtains are also sound deadening curtains. So it improves the audio in here and it also cuts out the road noise and also means that the lighting is consistent every single week. I know that by the time I turn on the background, RGB lighting, turn on the main lighting, sit down behind the cameras, everything is consistent. So then pretty much it's a case of changing shirt and getting ready to record. The last thing I do before filming is turn the phone on to filming mode and then I sit down to record. I monitor myself on this Desview monitor just to make sure that I'm in frame. The main camera that I use is a Canon 90D. Not the most expensive camera, but I love the results that it gives. It's got a 24 mm lens on it. I've just bought a new lens for it. I shoot at f1.4 at 24 FPS. The cutaway camera that I use is my 16 Pro Max. I sh now use the Blackmagic app. I was using the Final Cut camera app, but I don't like results as much as I do in the Blackmagic app. The reason is that I can carry over the majority of the settings from this Canon over into Blackmagic and record in there. You'll notice that I've got a moment phone case on the 16 Pro Max. That's because I'm using an ND filter on the lens as well. That's the basic recording setup. On the iPhone 16, I'm recording in ProRes Log, huge files, but they record directly to the Samsung SSD. So that's the recording side of it, or the camera side of it set up. Next, we're gonna look at the audio. The audio setup again is nice and consistent. I've only ever used this one mic for my YouTube work, which is a Rode NTG4A. It's literally just out of frame. That goes over to an uh, audio interface, a Vocaster One. I like that because it adds a little bit of processing onto the mic. And from there, that goes into Adobe Audition. I've worked out some presets that I use for myself, which include a debreather, believe it or not, a de I've got a certain amount of parametric EQ going through there and some compression. The last thing I do with the audio file in Adobe Audition, which I really love as an audio editor, is that I set the loudness standard of the audio file to minus 23 LUFs. And then that's kind of the recording setup finished. It's, I record the audio as a WAV file in 48K, and I always make sure to keep that original audio file. Now I've got a folder that I've got saved on my desktop on the Mac, and I just copy that each week and then just rename it. Before I start recording, I will generally have an idea of what the title of the video is going to be that week and what the description is going to be. I'll also have a very good idea of the thumbnail. I like to have all of that reasoned out in my mind before I start recording because I just think it helps me focus better on the story that I'm going to tell in the video. So that folder is really important because 
In Final Cut, and I switched to Final Cut about 18 months ago. Before that, I was Adobe all the way through, Adobe Audition and Premiere Pro. I was having some color issues in Premiere Pro. I switched over to Final Cut without too much of an issue, and I've been really, really happy in it ever since. But with Final Cut in particular, you need really good file management. So I've got this folder set up with all different subfolders in there. I will have a folder, for instance, for the audio, the compressed audio ready to use on the video itself, the raw audio I'll keep, for the video, there'll also be folders in there for stream recordings, for B-roll, there's a thumbnail folder in there, all laid out. So it's just, again, a nice methodical way of working each week. Hopefully by the end of Monday, the plan should be that I've got the story written, ready to publish later in the week. I've got the A-roll shot and the audio ready. So before I leave this studio that night, I'll generally always just put it into Final Cut here on the Mac Mini. I'll sync up as a multicam sequence, the audio and the two video files and then I'll just do some basic color grading just to dump some color grade on it, nothing final. It's just, that's a good place to end Monday on. Before leaving the studio, I will have that on the SSD that's gonna come home with me. It's a Thunderbolt 5 Acasis Thunder, uh, SSD that I take home with me. You'll understand why in a moment. I also copy it onto another Acasis SSD that's permanently attached to the Mac Mini and also to my NAS. Redundancy is a big thing for me. I don't want to lose projects halfway through the week. So I make sure to back up everywhere all through the week in three places. So as I leave the studio on a Monday night, I've got a title, I've got a description, I've got the A-roll shot, the audio shot, and basically the file is now synced and ready to start editing. And then I'll carry on on Tuesday morning at home. On a Tuesday morning, I'll start editing. There's general admin I have to do beforehand, but then I get into the editing of the file. Now, to give you an idea for a typical, say, 12, 15 minute video that you see, I'll generally record for about 25 minutes. The Canon cuts out at 29 minutes anyway, so I do try to get it recorded within that time frame. On a Tuesday morning, the first thing I'll do is go through and do the first pass. I will color grade it accurately on the MacBook Pro and using the iPad Pro, two very good displays. I'll check that I'm happy with the color grading on the log footage and match it as closely as possible to the Canon. I've got preset made, which gets me 90% of the way there. And even though everything's consistent in here each week, there's just a tiny little tweak that often needs to be made. Once I'm happy with the color on the cutaway shots on the 16 Pro Max, I then start going through, chopping out all the mistakes and the bad takes and gives me the rough video. From there, I will gen generally do a second pass on a Tuesday morning, still at home, and begin to tighten things up a little bit, maybe start doing some of the jump cuts, some of the zooms, and get, by that stage, the video is pretty much taken form of what it's gonna be. I will then come into the studio and carry on working with that SSD plugged into the Mac Mini. The reason I use a Thunderbolt 5 SSD, although the MacBook Pro only has Thunderbolt 4 ports, is of course, when I come in here, I can plug it into the back of the Mac Mini and work at the full Thunderbolt 5 speeds. So I will then carry on editing off of that SSD. And then it's a case of beginning to go through, really tighten up all of the edits exactly as I want them to be. Sometimes just find little words you don't like, little phrase you don't like. I just cut all of that out and then I'm ready to start shooting B-roll. Now for me, my videos are really heavy on B-roll. I don't never use any library pictures at all. And I use only minimal screen recording, say of the Apple website, when I really think it helps in telling the story. But I take a lot of pride in shooting B-roll. That takes time. Generally, I will spend from about three o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon to about eight o'clock Tuesday evening, just shooting B-roll. So then on a Wednesday morning, I can check that I've got the B-roll roughly placed and also gives me an idea if there's any B-roll that I've forgotten. Or if I say, like I did a couple of weeks ago on the iPhone 16e video, want to go and do some location shots. I did that a few weeks ago at Heathrow Airport as well. So sometimes I might just go out and do some location shots. Again, if I think it's going to help tell the story. The other thing that gets done on a Wednesday is then the final pass should be made and I'll begin adding in graphics. So that could be any of the on-screen graphics you see. Also, the call to action, all of those signs, all of that gets put on. For those graphics, I use Motion VFX. I find they're brilliant, they work so, so well. I try to use different ones each week where possible. I like the videos to be fresh. I know some creators use exactly the same each week. I find that a little bit repetitive. I want you to have something new to look at each week, but Motion VFX, certainly with Final Cut, works brilliantly well. And by the way, while I'm mentioning uh, graphics and call to actions, if you haven't subscribed yet and you're enjoying this video, and I know you've been wanting this video for a long time now, so hopefully you're getting something out of it. Don't forget, subscribing really does help me out. In this video, I'm not going into great depths in say what I do with the audio side of things or great depths of what I do in Final Cut Pro. If you want me to make a video somewhere down the line talking to you about exactly how I work on the audio, exactly what I do in Final Cut, let me know and I'll happily make those videos as well. So by the time Wednesday comes to an end, and I try to finish work most nights around about 8, 8.30, it's pretty much done. By Wednesday night, the video should be done. So when I wake up Thursday morning, it's a case of, again, at home, just watching it through. 
I should be happy with it by that point. And then it's a case of coming in and shooting a thumbnail. I shoot the thumbnail on the Canon as raw photos. I have a very good idea of what I'm going to shoot for the thumbnail, and I only shoot one thumbnail. Now, in YouTube at the moment, you can do A-B testing. I don't use it. The reason is, and there's always a reason for me, I've got a logic behind this, is I will give that thumbnail all of my everything. It's the best I can possibly make. So I don't see the point of putting up something I don't think's as good. If that thumbnail doesn't work, that's on me. I've tried to tell a story. And that one thumbnail, if we look, say, well, the most recent, the iMac one from last week, that simple iMac image took me about three and a half hours to shoot, place everything just as I wanted it, get the lighting right, and edit it in Lightroom first of all, which is where I kind of color grade the wall file, and then in Photoshop where I add the text and so on. So by Thursday evening, everything's done. I will have the video uploading into YouTube Studio so it can be processing while I'm working on the thumbnail, so there's no rush. Then it's going through basically adding in hashtags and tags, which vary each week, of course, depending upon what I'm talking about. I've got templates that I keep in Apple Notes made for most of this, and certainly the format of the description is fairly similar week to week. I try to publish at the moment around about 5.30 on a Thursday night. And by that stage, it's then seeing how the video performs on any given week. Once the video has gone live, I then update my website with that video so that all the SEO from YouTube and generally on Google search is all going to the same place. It, that video is being found. And I have been generally uploading the blog on the same day as well. The reason being that all of the images in that blog are stills that I take from the B-roll that I've shot for the video. So that's my working week. On Friday, that tends to be a little bit of a calmer day. I answer comments and I will answer every single comment. I always have done and I always will do. The reason is it's important for you to know that I'm genuine. I read every comment and I answer every comment and we've got a lovely community and I get so much out of reading your comments. It's a big part of the week for me. Yes, it can take me a couple of hours every day, but I'll generally sit down first thing in the morning, that admin I mentioned early on, that can just be sitting down answering comments. I'll grab myself a coffee, sit and answer all the comments. That's on most Fridays. Every other Friday, I record a podcast, my Minus 16 podcast. I record that with Alex and Daniel. Uh, if you haven't listened to it yet, it's on YouTube and all the other podcast hosts. That, of course, throws a bit more pressure on the week. It means Fridays, not only do we record it, but then I edit it and get the audio version of it ready and the video version of it ready. I use Riverside FM and I now use Riverside's desktop app on the Mac for recording that in. I love Riverside for podcasts. It is brilliant. It's got so many functions in there. I've been playing around with it a lot recently and we're getting even more out of it. So that's every other week. And also every single Friday, I also record a totally free members video newsletter. I sit here and just talk to you about what's going on behind the scenes that I can't talk to you about on the main video. If you haven't subscribed yet, by the way, over my website, you'll see there's a pop-up box. Leave me your details there and you'll get it. It's totally free. About 10 minutes every Sunday, I just talk to you about what's going on here on the channel. And that's kind of the basic setup in the studio here. The teleprompter, by the way, that stays put. That's a new addition to me. I've had it for a while, but it was just pushed to one side. Now I use it predominantly for the podcast. It means I can put the podcast session via sidecar onto the iPad, lay the iPad in front of the teleprompter, I can look directly at the camera and I can see the beautiful faces of Alex and Daniel. But now I've decided to leave that there permanently. The reason being is for shorts. I try to make a short each week as well. That's generally more news-based. I also keep my shorts to a minute. I know I can go to three minutes, but it means also I can use them on other platforms such as Instagram and on threads and on Twitter or X. So for that though, where I'm very time constrained and need to get a lot of points in, that is the only time I script. That on the shorts, I read word for word. So I found leaving the teleprompter there works really well for me. It just means I can come in and start to work. I want a friction-free environment. So for me, I leave as much as possible set up here during the week. I try to streamline things as best as possible. And that's the reason that I can only make one video per week. The amount of attention that I put into it and the amount of heart and energy and love I put into it. But I'd rather put everything into making these videos as good as I possibly can and not cutting corners and getting two videos out a week, I'd rather have one bite at the cherry and make it as good as possible for you. And then of course, the whole week starts over again. It's back to Saturday and I'm thinking of ideas. So there you go. That's how my week works out using all of this Apple gear around me. I would always watch the video, by the way, before it goes live on as many different platforms as possible. I'll look at it on the iMac. I'll look at it on my studio display. I'll look at it on the iPad Pro, on the MacBook Pro, just to check I'm happy with the color and the audio. Once I've done as many color and quality checks as I possibly can, the video is then live. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want me to go into more detail about audio or about video editing, let me know and I'll happily make a dedicated shorter video just about that side of it. 
and you've got any other questions at all, if you're thinking of starting a, a YouTube channel for yourself and you've got any questions that you want to ask me, let me know and I'll do my very best to help you out. By the way, if you didn't see that video last week about that iMac, the one that took three and a half hours to make that one thumbnail, it's on screen for you to watch right now.